This is the day that the Lord has made. Welcome to worship this morning in God's house. Our sermon theme for this morning is from our Old Testament reading in Isaiah chapter 6. It's from fear to forgiveness to following. We'll also be worshiping out of divine service setting 4 found on page 203. And if you'd like to mark the psalm in your hymn book, it is Psalm 138. Let's rise and greet those around us. Please be seated for our opening hymn.
Please rise. You're invited to make the sign of the cross in remembrance of your baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our song.
be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the truth faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after Epiphany is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray for the power to interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, and I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing, pray, sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? For you may be thank giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil, but in your thinking be mature. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. In honor of the Holy Gospel, I invite you to please rise for the Alleluia and verse. Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but fishermen had gone out, from the, out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked to put out a little from land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, 
Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he, he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. So all, and so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they had left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Having heard this word from God, we confess our common faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn of the day.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis for our text for today is the Old Testament reading that you just heard read. Isaiah was afraid. Or better yet, it would probably be better to say he was terrified. There he was before the Almighty God and he was filled with fear. He knew he didn't belong. He knew he was not worthy to be there. He knew that he was completely deserving of utter destruction. He was unclean. He lived amongst unclean people. And now before him was the holy God, the holy, holy Holy of holies, as we just sang, and he had only to be afraid. He had only to be terrified. We heard read also that this God given vision all took place in the year that King Uzziah died. It was the beginning of the end for Judah. It was 740 B.C. It would not be long, a mere 18 years, and the Assyrians would come and they would conquer the Israelites to the north. It would not be long after that, just a century later, or just a little bit longer than a century, and the Babylonians would come and they would destroy Judah and send them all into exile. So who would God send to His people? Who would God send to wake them up from their sinful rebellion against Him? This was that moment here in Isaiah chapter 6. The calling of Isaiah to serve as God's prophet. And it came in a vision. A vision that began with fear and with terror. The vision was of the Lord, high and lifted up, seated upon a throne. He was wearing a robe, a robe that was so long that it filled the entire temple area. It was a manifestation of what we know as His omnipresence, that God is present everywhere. There was nowhere that Isaiah looked that he did not see the evidence of God's presence. There were seraphs, celestial angelic beings, covered with a glow or a flaming fire upon them. They flew over the Almighty God, standing guard, an honor guard, if you will, and with humility, with modesty, and with respect, with their wings they covered their faces, with their wings they covered their feet. The whole temple was filled with the sound of these seraphim and they spoke these words. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with His glory. The foundations of the threshold shook. The house was filled with smoke. And Isaiah had only to tremble in fear. Tremble in fear as he called out, Woe is me! Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amongst a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Unclean! Isaiah instantly came to terms with the fact that he was unclean. It is a word that lepers were instructed to use when anyone came too close to them. Unclean! Unclean! They were told they had to shout. Stay away! Don't get near us! We are exiled. We are cut off. Cut off from our families. Cut off from our community. Cut off from our church. Don't get any closer because you too could be cut off. Isaiah's fear was more than just simply being cut off. His fear was being killed and destroyed. He knew that he was an unclean sinner. And to be in the presence of the holy God only meant his death and destruction. He had only to cry out, cry out in fear. 
cry out in terror. How do you approach the throne of the Almighty God today? Are you aware of how unclean you truly are? Unclean thoughts, unclean words, unclean deeds. Are you aware that your sins, even just one of them, condemns you to death and eternity in hell? Are you aware that you deserve all of God's wrath heaped upon you and for you to be separated forever from God? Do you come here in fear and terror, knowing what you have thought, knowing what you have said, knowing what you have done or failed to do, or have you lost sight of the fact that you are the creature and God is the creator? Have you lost sight of the fact that you are filthy and unclean and that He is the Holy One? In essence, do you fear the Almighty God? Do you fear, love, and trust in Him above all things? Are you in awe of His presence as you come into His house? Do you realize and recognize that the same One who has the power to save you also has the power to destroy you forever? Isaiah realized that fact. There was no doubt in his mind at that very moment he was completely and utterly doomed. Even the seraphs, these celestial angelic beings, realized their unworthiness. Their covering of their faces and their feet showed their total sense of modesty and respect for whose presence they were in. This was the King, the Lord of hosts. As we enter into the house of the Lord week in and week out, is this something that we pause to realize? Or do we take for granted what is going on here in God's house? We are welcomed into the presence of the Almighty God, and yet we have no business being here. We are unclean. We are sinners. Sinners deserving of death and damnation. We are beggars. There is nothing in our hands that we bring. In fact, it's worse than that. All we have to offer are our sins. And so we, like Isaiah, have only to cry out, cry out, woe, woe is us! We are unclean. And we dwell among unclean people. And what's worse, we like our uncleanness. We like to be dirty. Like a little boy that stands next to a mud puddle, we can't help but jump in. We like our sins. We like them far too much. We are unclean people, dwelling amongst unclean people. And we have grown too comfortable with our sins. Far too comfortable. So comfortable that we don't even recognize them anymore. We don't call sin a sin. We are far too quick to compare ourselves to others. Far too quick to think that we are not that bad, far too quick to lie and justify our actions. But not one act of self-justification will stand before the Almighty God. His holiness would only burn us up and we would find ourselves in an eternal lake of fire. And that is why we all need to be awakened. 
like the people in Isaiah's day, we need to wake up and come to terms with the vastness of our sinful rebellion. When we get on a path of self-justification of our sins, it is only a path that leads to death and hell. All of us, myself included, need to repent of our uncleanness. All of us need to cry out, Woe is me to the Almighty God. So what brings you here today crying out, Woe is me. What is it that you have thought, that you have said, or you have done that you know you should have not? Was it the thoughts about your neighbor? Your co-worker? Was it what you said about your spouse? Or to your spouse? Or to a friend? Was it the language that you used? Was it taking the Lord's name in vain? Was it something that you did to one of your siblings? A brother? A sister? For those in school, was it a classmate? What is it that you have failed to do? What is it that you have neglected? for far too long. That was quite a bit of law, wasn't it? To stand in the presence of the Almighty God and to know that you are unclean. I have good news for all of you who are crying out, woe is me. You've come to the right place. You've come to God's house. And the house of the Lord may be a place that you don't deserve to come, but it is a place that you are welcomed to come. And God is the one who is welcoming you here with open arms. You see, the house of the Lord is a place for sinners. It's a place where people come who don't have it all figured out. It's a place where people, well, people that haven't perfected themselves. You're not perfect, nor am I. This is a place for people to come and cry out, just like Isaiah did. It's a place for people to cry out to the Almighty God for something that we struggle so hard to do, to cry out for help. Woe is me. You see, the same God who can destroy us is also the same God who saves us. He is the only God who saves us. Isaiah experienced that firsthand. There Isaiah was in absolute fear, fear and terror. No doubt wondering at what moment he would be destroyed for having the audacity to think about coming into the presence of the Almighty God as an unclean sinner. When all of a sudden, one of the seraphim took a coal, a hot burning coal, from the altar and there placed that coal upon his lips and the seraph said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Just like that, Isaiah's sins were forgiven. Just like that, all of the fear and the terror melted away like snow on a warm spring day, a day I am begging for these days. <laughs> Just like that, he could now stand in the presence of the holy God because he too had been made holy. That's what forgiveness does. 
That's what the Almighty God does. His holiness literally consumes all that is unclean in His presence and it is done away with. Instantly gone. The fear is gone. His sins are removed as far as the east is from the west. And the wrath of God is satisfied. We come here because we are sinners. We come here to receive anew again and again that truth that God's wrath against sin was satisfied in the person of His Son, Jesus. Everything that you have thought, everything that you have said, everything that you have done or left undone, everything that makes you unclean, Jesus takes that upon Himself on the cross of Calvary. He did so willingly, lovingly, and voluntarily so that you and I, who only deserve death and damnation, would be made clean inside and out. So that we would be given life and salvation. That is what is going to be placed upon your lips here today. Forgiveness, life, salvation. Like the burning coal that was placed upon Isaiah's lips, so you will have the body and blood of Jesus placed upon your lips here in a few moments. And at that very moment, the body and blood of Jesus will course through your very body and everything that was once unclean will now be made clean. It's just like it was at your baptism. You were washed. You were cleansed. You were sanctified. Sanctified. You were made holy. Holy means that you were set apart. Separated from this world of sin and sent out then to serve the Lord with joy and gladness. That was Isaiah's response. Joy and gladness. He had been forgiven. And now when the Lord asked him, whom shall I send and who will go for us? He's like, hey, here am I. Send me. With fear removed. With sins forgiven. We are now set free to follow our Lord and Savior wherever He leads. That's why He's placed you into your vocations, your stations in life, so that you can share what you've been given to share, so that you can share hope and teach Christ with all those around you. And we do not do so filled with fear, but rather overflowing with forgiveness inside of us, afforded us by Christ Jesus our Lord. And we don't know where He leads. Just like P Peter in the Gospel reading, didn't know where He was going after that. But we follow Him trusting that He will lead us to the cross into our own empty tomb on the day of the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Yes, death may be sure to come, but in the end, we will join with the saints and the archangels in the climactic song that the seraphim sang there in the presence of Isaiah before the Almighty God. It is known as the Sanctus. We sing it every Sunday before the Lord's Supper. It's that song that proclaims the holiness of our God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full his glory. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise for the prayers of the church.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord God of hosts, build up your church and manifest your spirit among us with wisdom and knowledge. Let our words be measured and intelligible to, fellow, to our fellow Christians and to those outside your church that we may utter our amens in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Sustain those called to be fishers of men in Christ's church, that they would not be discouraged when they toil all night and take nothing, but continue to let down their nets at his word according to, to that calling. Especially we ask for you to be with missionary pastor James May, for vicars Mark Peters and Dale Cranky, and for seminary and Mark Esser. Lord, in your mercy. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may be mature in our thinking and infants in evil. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all Christian homes that the, your word would be sown and produce much fruit. Lord, in your mercy. Give us faith to let down the nets of your, your word in our daily vocations and trust your Son to do his gracious work through poor sinners like us. Lord, in your mercy. Sustain the Lutheran Hour ministry as it continues to proclaim the good news of Christ. Guard and keep all those who are part of this ministry focused on your grace and forgiveness given to all creation as they seek to share that great message throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, be not far from us. As you have worked deeds of salvation in Christ Jesus, so make haste to help us now in every trouble. Give healing to the sick, strength to the weak, and comfort those afflicted, especially those we name before you in our hearts. Do not forsake us, nor the generations to come, Lord, in your mercy. Send from your altar, O Lord, the body and blood of Christ. Cleanse us and our lips by this blessed sacrament, delivering the atonement Christ has won for us, that we may be worthy to stand before you now and at the last day. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, never depart from us. Though we are unworthy of you and your bounty, you are pleased to receive our meager thanks and reluctant obedience for the sake of Christ's perfect obedience. Let your word rule us and your spirit revive us to, lead, to leave behind pride and anxiety alike, that we may follow you in all that we do. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. I invite you to fill out a fellowship pad found the inside aisle of your pew. Remember one name per line. The date is February 6th. We worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings.
Please rise. St. Paul writes in his first letter to the Corinthians, Whoever therefore eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. Therefore, take in heart the word of the Lord. If you have not been instructed in the Lutheran faith or you doubt the presence of the Lord in this meal, it is out of love for you that we would ask you to re- refrain from receiving the Lord's Supper. And speak to a pastor after the service if you have any questions. If you'd like to come forward and receive a blessing, simply put your arms across your chest so that we know how to do so. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown us when you sent your only Son, only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. As the glory of your presence once filled your ancient temple, so in the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, you manifest the fullness of your glory in human flesh. We give you you thanks that in his most holy supper you reveal your glory to us. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood so that we may one day behold your glory face to face. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise. Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul to life everlasting. Depart with his peace and his joy. Your sins are forgiven. We sing the Nunc Dimittis. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask that you not forsake your children, but always rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled to constantly serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Please be seated. Just a few brief announcements this morning. Uh, we have 42 youth that are traveling to the National Youth Gathering this summer down to Houston. And that is somewhat expensive. And so we're in an effort to raise for this. We have a cupcake fundraisers. Now, if you want to buy a cupcake for yourself, that is awesome. I might do that. Um, I don't think Anna's here anymore. Um, I'll probably buy one for her too. But if you want to buy a cupcake for yourself or multiple, the sale is going on in between services this week and next week as well. No, wait, no, no, strike that. Not next week. Pickup will be next week on February 13th, Monday and Monday, February 14th. Got to get them out before Valentine's Day. So you can order them in the back. I'd encourage you all to do though. Do so. Um, so the use of the facilities, um, with our use of facilities being at a premium, all facility re use requests must come through the church office. We ask that you send them to the church office, and that includes both church and school. We thank you for your cooperation amidst all of that. Um, registration is now open for preschool and kindergarten. Uh, open enrollment for new students in grades 1 through 8 will start on February 12th. 28th, something to look forward to there. And finally, uh, do you play an instrument? Zion is looking to create a database of instrumentalists in the congregation who would be willing to play for the divine serv worship services. If you play an instrument and you are willing to share that gift with us at Zion, please contact the congregational office and provide your name, the instrument or instruments you play, and your contact information. Thank you. Uh, all that being said, go in peace, serve the Lord.